After watching the rather disappointing reviews of Skull and Bones, I realized that there was a market out there eagerly waiting for a good pirate game. I myself felt the itch to sail the seas and decided to revisit what was likely my favorite game on the PSP, but would it hold up all these years later? Well, if I was to lay out each individual element on the table, you'd probably think that Sid Meier's Pirates was the most boring game ever. Firstly, there really isn't a story. While the game does have a call to adventure by having the protagonist's family kidnapped, it doesn't really do anything with it. Even if you do take the time to save all four family members, it does nothing other than play the same cutscene four times in a row and add a sentence to the rather bland end screen. The visuals also haven't aged well. While the graphics do look a little bit better in game than on the recording due to the awkward aspect ratios, there's also some issues with the camera when exploring on land, though this does seem to be intentional. Gameplay mostly consists of sailing, with agonizingly long segments of you trying to sail crosswind so you can get to the right side of the map. Combat and dancing are just quick time events, exploring on land can take ages, and chasing your family can be frustrating. But I swear that Sid Meier attended the University of Minecraft because all of these elements combine into one of the most addicting games I have ever played. You see, once you enter the West Indies, you're free to do whatever you want. If you decide to focus on finding your family, you'll find yourself entangled in an epic adventure that will have you assembling a crew and hunt down information that will eventually lead you to chase down the people with powerful but admittedly slow ships. This will then lead you to the admittedly good sea combat and then to the shipboarding, with each captain's capture providing you with a piece of the map that will eventually lead you to your family member. You can also hunt down famous pirates such as Henry Morgan, Blackbeard, Calico Jack, and more. These pirates take up different ports with each playthrough, which keeps things fresh in future attempts. You can also try a more privateer approach, where you ally yourself with a single nation and wreak havoc amongst enemy nations. You can do this by capturing ships, using diplomatic ties to affect the surprisingly deep economic system. You can also sneak into cities to salvage relationships. You can even capture cities through a simple but fun turn-based strategy mini-game, which is often followed by a QTE sword fight. You can also gain wealth through other means, such as trade, finding treasures, or even gaining non-consequential acres of land through your exploits whilst rising through the military ranks. You can also search for or capture the fastest or most powerful ships in the game. You can also search for the most beautiful of the governor's daughters and earn her affection through QTE dances, gifts, duels, and rescues. You see, quick time events in the game are surprisingly solid, as there are more than a just wait for a command and press the corresponding button. While it is a bit like this on the easiest difficulty, you can increase your difficulty by increasing your character's renown, which then forces you to be more careful in these encounters. Fighting turns into a form of rock, paper, scissors, where you have to watch your opponent carefully and respond with the correct action or a fast counter. Dancing is also similar, but requires you to focus on your partner's hand gestures as well as correct timing with the music. Executing this correctly will provide you with bonuses that will gain her favor, with poor performance meeting with disapproval. All these elements, including dancing, fighting, diplomacy, your lifespan, and more, can be affected by the skill that you selected at the start of the game, and supplemented by items that can be bought during random encounters with a mysterious traveler. All these options and variables make each playthrough different, as you try to manage delicate balance to get the most out of each playthrough. However, I will admit the irony that this 2004 remake of a game from 1987 itself needs a remake. This is because Sid Meier's Pirates 2004 isn't particularly accessible. 
Well, it is available on PSP, Wii, and the original Xbox, as well as being available digitally on GOG and Steam. There is no spoken dialogue, and all of the text is English, with no in-game way to change the language. There's also no way to rebind your keys, however all inputs are controlled by one hand, though this would require you switching back and forth from the mouse to the keyboard as towns and cities require you to use the mouse. You can also choose difficulty at the beginning of the game and increase it as you gain prominence. You can also decrease it later on, but you have to do this strategically as you lose 9 months of in-game time every time that you want to do this. Sid Meier's Pirates isn't very convenient either. I personally recommend the GOG version as it runs smoothly out of the box, but you can get the Steam version to run, though it may take some external fixes. The internal settings menu is really bare bones, but once you get it running, it should run flawlessly. The aspect ratio is a bit more bearable in game than the recording, but if you decide to adjust the resolution to a modern aspect ratio, it's also important to note that the mouse's location in the UI will also be bugged. But other than that, the only bugs I noticed were some collision issues and boats zooming around when you escort them. Ultimately, Sid Meier's Pirates is one of those games that once you pick it up, it is difficult to put down. Somehow, all the elements combine into a fun experience that I have no doubt I'll continue to revisit in the future. But its age, availability, and limited settings can be significant hindrances to enjoying the game. I think that this means that Sid Meier's Pirates 2004 earns a decent on the A scale. While I may think it's a classic, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Check out my last video on 2010's Medal of Honor and consider subscribing. Until then, this has been Rob the Slob, and I'll see you in the virtual commute.